Hey and welcome back everyone to our firmware development and hacking streams. So today uh, we're going to continue our journey on the X270 uh, UFI based laptop, well as of now, and we want to see if uh, it is really that secure and we can maybe reproduce some findings. And well, as you may see now, uh, I have something new for you because I managed to, well, with some help to be honest, uh, to set up HDMI capturing here. Uh, turns out there were, um, you know, a, a few knobs that you could still twist here. And let me show you that uh, very quickly here in this uh, menu. So here in the configuration, uh, I think it was another display section there. Uh, this is where I could actually configure the output. So yeah, that is why I wasn't getting HDMI output initially. Uh, but yeah, now that we have it working, uh, you know, we can show you everything that is actually coming from this laptop here, even on boot, right? So not only later in the operating system. Yeah, speaking of which, uh, I have prepared a little operating system for us to play around with and see, you know, what we can do with this platform, maybe. Um, before we dive right into that, um, let's talk a bit about, again, uh, what our context here is. And with that, um, let me get back into the web browser here. So uh, we had been looking at this document uh, here. So this here is uh, the presentation that the company Binary gave at Black Hat Europe uh, this year. And they talked about, uh, you know, vulnerabilities in UFI based firmware that you find on, you know, common platforms like, you know, the laptops that we have today, uh, servers, also desktops and stuff. And well, they found, you know, a good more than 10,000 devices to be actually vulnerable to uh, the issue that, um, you know, when uh, you provide custom boot splash images, you know, you could actually gain code execution on many, many platforms, um, you know, with, um, like different nuances, it's always a bit different from platform to platform. So we thought, hey, let's get a laptop here. Uh, we got a Lenovo X270, and that's uh, what we're going to play around with and see if we can reproduce this, or maybe also find other stuff that is, you know, still lingering in the firmware. So yeah, um, we uh, mostly actually talked about, um, you know, the basic ideas here. We talked about the write-up that uh, the UFI forum did on, you know, uh, how they actually handle uh, their, well, issues if they have any, you know, how their whole supply chain and the ecosystem works and so on. Yeah, but um, today we want to shift gears a bit and we now want to see if we can actually, you know, trigger something. So yeah, we um, just briefly scrolled through here a bit last time and, you know, came to one of the slides that um, is then talking about some uh, of the findings. So yeah, this year, um, you know, the issue is actually not a new one. It's already been discovered almost 15 years ago. Uh, back in the days, you know, there were already issues with image parsers, but apparently, you know, uh, things can regress. So yeah, it came back again. Um, we talked about this here. This is a rough overview of, you know, how that supply chain works and, you know, where you actually find the issue, um, you know, with um, many, many uh, companies involved and vendors in between. Uh, famously, the so-called IBVs or IFVs, the Independent BIOS of Firmware Vendors. Well, nowadays, we just call them IFVs, Independent Firmware Vendors. Uh, but yeah, nevertheless, some people still call it IBV. It doesn't really matter. Uh, it's virtually the same. Anyway, so yeah, until you get your final device, you know, there are many, many uh, people involved in between that actually work on the software that is running on it. So yeah. Um, uh, this here is the implications that we just uh, briefly talked about. Uh, this here is just a very, very rough table for overview. Um, this here is the logo file vulnerability. Of course, not the only vulnerability that you find on those platforms. There are also others like the boot hole one or, you know, other bootloaders can also be affected. Um, there is no knowledge on whether or not this has been exploited in the wild. So yeah, that, that is a bit of a, you know, a puzzle. Um, and it's actually really hard to figure out if there is no monitoring in place for that. So yeah, that is maybe something that um, should come uh, in place uh, somewhat soonish. Um, I don't know, we will have to see. So yeah, as long as we cannot roll out our own firmware on our own devices, you know, like on most laptops that you can buy, you know, it's up to the vendors to provide you with uh, something. But um, yeah, if, if they don't, then uh, you're essentially in bad luck here. 
So yeah, um, there were two issues being discussed here. The so-called CWEs. We also talked a bit about CWEs and CVEs last time. Uh, I just want to briefly look at those two here. So this here is the heap-based buffer overflow, and the other one is the out-of-bounds read. So both are issues that you know allow to you know look into a write into memory uh, that is actually outside uh, outside a running process, or you know that you are not supposed to actually uh, be able to you know look at. So yeah, um, that that is a very very big issue, and it's uh, something that you you know still commonly find in also other software today. Like you know, a lot of software like uh, that, which is written in C or C plus plus, you know, where memory management is very uh, much a manual task. Still, uh, this is where you would um, you know be prone to having this error in your or uh, issue in your software. So yeah, um, I have also opened something else here. Let's have a brief look at that as well. So uh, if you look at cwe.mitre.org, uh, mitre that is M I T R E. Um, you know they uh, you know list all the CWEs and also you know they talk about like different perspectives and so on. Uh, this here is the list for uh, weaknesses in hardware. So this is a very you know specific subset of everything that you find in the CWE platform. And if we look at this here, uh, these are you know in, in part really hardware design issues. Uh, but there is also something interesting I find here, and uh, you know this is not the um, they they are saying this is an unranked list, so you know there is like uh, no measurement of you know how many of these issues you find in the wild. Maybe uh, I'm not too sure um, what the background is here. You might you might want to read up on that a bit. Uh, but I found this one here very interesting. CWE 1277 firmware not ad updatable, and um, you know there is a certain nuance to this um, because arguably, if your firmware is updatable but you are not receiving updates, you are still prone to the same problem, right? So you, you cannot update something that you do not get updates for, right? So it's very, very important that your vendors are providing you with updates. And we looked at the Lenovo le uh, website last time also, and we saw that indeed they are actually providing us with updates. So, you know, uh, really kudos and props. That is a very, very good thing to do. Um, it's not very typical. Uh, you also need to keep that in mind. You know, this has been a development that changed a bit over the years. So we're talking about a business laptop here. You know, this is where, uh, let's say, the money is. Um, and, you know, uh, it is more common for vendors to provide updates. But I've also seen other vendors who, you know, were not actually providing up their, uh, updates for the platforms. Sometimes, well, maybe one or two, you know, to mitigate some minor issues or, you know, fix some actual, uh, like, uh, even bugs in just regular usage. Um, but yeah, it's, it's very important that you get continuous updates over the years. Like, you know, when you buy a device, you don't want it to, you know, turn into uh, something malicious after two years just because you didn't receive any updates, right? So yeah, uh, watch out for that when uh, you, you make your choice of buying a new device today. Anyway, um, yeah, uh, with that, um, the more general issue we uh, also talked a bit about last time here is this one here, actually. Um, and that is also what we're going to look a bit deeper into today. So when you develop software, and you know you handle input, which is virtually almost always the case, right? So usually software is for interacting with it, for getting data in, getting data out. You know something that you can interact with, like you know when let's say when I click a button here or a link, when when I click this link, I don't want to you know out of a sudden uh, have some uh, compromise on my laptop here, you know just because I clicked on that, but that can technically theoretically happen and also practically happen a lot in the past you know when people just found vulnerabilities and uh, thought they should put up a website and you know provide you with um, the so-called drive-by downloads and stuff like that so you know it sometimes happened that you know people ended up on websites and all of a sudden they had malware on their machine that should definitely not happen and especially not in your firmware because the firmware is something where we have almost no monitoring for, right? Un unless we're talking about like, you know, more sophisticated enterprise setups maybe, or data centers. So yeah, you usually, you know, the common people, let's say the plebs, like <laughs> you and me, we don't really have that infrastructure at home, right? But we would still like to be able to verify that our laptops are actually okay. 
there are some projects actually looking into that very very interesting ones um but it's not something that you would commonly find that you know vendors provide you with so yeah keep that in mind also anyway let's talk about input validation so what do you do when you process input from the outside world so the first thing you want to do is you want to check that the input can actually be sensibly processed by your software right so let's say um, you're looking at a text document, right? So you want to make sure that there is really text in there and not something else, right? So let's say you just want to print some text on the screen and you, you know, you, you don't want it to be code and then out of a sudden turn into something entirely different. So you want to be really sure that it's really just text. That is something that we, for example, found on the web a lot of times, you know, there were issues where, uh, you know, people could just, uh, put their own you know, text somewhere on the website that was very, very funny. Uh, like, you know, essentially every platform is providing you with that mechanism today, right? So like when you put something here in the comments, for example, um, then, you know, you, you shouldn't actually be able to not just provide your text, but also scripts, right? So you, you don't want um, something uh, just running because somebody wrote something in the chat. So that shouldn't trigger uh, code running on your platform. You don't really want that. So yeah, we, we need to do a lot of things with that input. So one aspect is the validation. Another aspect is the so-called sanitization. That means that when you detect that something is actually not okay, you're able to you know, transform it into something that you can then still process. Um, that there are some scenarios where this actually makes sense where you, know, you might want to just discard some parts of something or you know, uh, only process a subset that is okay to you. So you can be a bit more conservative in uh, you know, what you then output, but you can be a bit more tolerant in what you accept as input. But of course, you know, depending on uh, the specific software and scenario, um, you know, that differs a bit in uh, how you want to respond to that. Anyway, so yeah, what we were talking about here in the logo fail scenario is, you know, as a user, or uh, you know, also a malicious actor, you could provide a custom image that should be shown by the firmware on boot up, right? And well, now we need to make sure that the image that is being provided is actually okay. Uh, let's say there is metadata in the image, like the image dimension, right? The width and the height. So you want to be sure that they are actually correct. So you want to make sure that they are not like arbitrarily large sizes, like you know, you don't want to allocate like terabytes of, uh, you know, memory, just because somebody wrote like, you know, erroneously high dimensions into the image, that wouldn't make much sense. Right. So yeah, let's, let's see if we can, uh, if we can find something like this, or uh, maybe some other issues today. So yeah, we will start uh, with a very few simple things. But yeah, with that in mind, let's switch over again to uh, looking at the laptop here. And what I want to do now is uh, I first want to boot into a little operating system, you know, and, and see that we, uh, you know, get a bit familiar with it. So, yeah, what I've prepared uh, is a USB stick, um, you know, with a Linux boot image on it that contains a uroot image. So uroot is the universal root file system. You know, there's just a few tiny tools in there. Um, yeah, you, you might see that the uh, frame rate here is not too high. Uh, I, I'm not too sure how to configure that properly, but yeah, it's, it's okay enough for us here now. So we're, you know, <laughs> not capturing some like uh, high speed uh, stuff that we really need. So yeah, it's okay. So yeah, uh, it says welcome to Euro. So we can now type a few things like, you know, we, we can go with uname, right? So we can, uh, we, we can see uh, what the kernel version is here. So as you can see, this is Linux 666. Um, the kernel that had just been released a few days ago, we're now at 667, but yeah, whatever. This is now 666. Also, you know, a bit funny. Um, now we can look a bit at the platform. Uh, I have configured the kernel so that we can also look at EFI variables, I think. So let's see if we actually have them. So that would be in sys, EF, sys uh, firmware, 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 uh, EFI, and then there is EFI vars. So as you can see, oh, there is a lot of EFI variables. Um, so yeah, it's 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 quite a lot. So let's put that in a pager. I hope this here works now, uh, or or maybe not. Okay. So yeah, I, I guess we need to um, uh, do this in a different way. Uh, 
let's uh, let's redirect this to a file, right? So let's put that in tmp uh, tmp efi vars ef efi vars and uh, yeah, like that. So we can say more uh, tmp efi vars. Come on like this and then we can you know scroll through step by step so the first thing that we have here uh it sounds very interesting it's called app name uh, i'm not too sure what that really means here there is app platform of var key database and you know then there is a bunch of boot uh boot 000 boot 0010 and so on um they all look very similar uh there is like boot current boot option support and a lot of other stuff boot order Right, that is something that I also talked about last time. That is part of uh, what I configured on this laptop here. Um, then there is a bunch more. Uh, there is con in and there is con out. Uh, that is interesting. So maybe through that variable, somehow we can write into the console or read out from the console. I don't know. Uh, con out dev console output device, maybe. There is CPU setup, uh, CPU setup volatile data, current policy. Diagnostic splash screen, I guess, is that thing. There is EPC BIOS, uh, a lot of interesting stuff. So yeah, let's uh, let's uh, look a bit further. Uh, there is load. Uh, I think we just skipped past something. Um, yeah, let's uh, let's do this again. So yeah, uh, there is this here ESRT platform entry. I don't know what that is to be honest. I think ESRT is some sort of maybe ACPI table or something. Error out device, event log, you know, a lot of stuff. Uh, kernel stuff. I don't know why that is in there. Uh, a bunch of keys, something LBC, LBL, hey, LWO. I have no idea what all of that stuff is. Um, the L might actually be for Lenovo, but yeah. I, I don't know. Um, yeah, but then there comes, you know, a lot of Lenovo stuff, Lenovo config, Lenovo FPR data and so on. And then uh, let's uh, look at the next page. So there is now a bunch of other things um, like, I don't know, mailbox queue, ME setup. So ME here would be the Intel management engine. Uh, there is the ME BIOS extension set up. So this is for the firmware menu, uh, an extension. I'm not sure how to trigger that, to be honest. Um, and, you know, a good bunch of other stuff. So, yeah, all of that are parts of the, you know, flash. So essentially there is like a, a few sections in the flash part uh, which are backing this data here. So, you know, the, those are just the names for it. Uh, well, and, and the corresponding so-called GUID. So in UFI, everything is uh, essentially addressable via GUIDs. Those are, you know, those long IDs that you see in the back. And then um, when when you want to write to that value or read that value, you know, you, you would call something in the uh, UFI. So the interface has some methods where you can say, hey, for this variable with that GUID, you know, give me the value or write a new value and stuff like that. So all of this is also a potential attack surface. Um, we might even just be able to break the platform by writing some random garbage into it, right? Um, let's let's see uh, if uh, we find something in here uh, which is for setting. So, oh, this is interesting. Uh, some of the last parts here are DB and DBX. So those are the databases for the so-called secure boot setup. So essentially, this is where you can put your own key material to sign your kernel uh, or well, operating system or bootloader or, you know, whatever your UFI should load next. Um, so, you, could, you know, you can you can put some keys in the TPM and then have the TPM, you know, uh, check on your kernel or maybe, you know, the firmware has some some other components uh, doing the check and, you know, just talking to the TPM somehow. You know, th there is like many different variants of that. Um, yeah, that is very interesting. So yeah, essentially, if you delete that database and somebody is trying to, uh, you know, boot, let's say a Windows system and you have secure boot enabled, then they won't be able to boot because the firmware <laughs> doesn't know the keys to verify the operating system with. So yeah, that is something to be careful with. Um, in fact, we actually just, uh, you know, turned off uh, secure boot here because we wanted to load a kernel. 
and uh, well that is not signed with the keys that are being stored here so yeah this is just a stock machine I haven't, I haven't touched it in uh, any other way so yeah the keys uh, in there are actually the Microsoft keys you know so yeah uh, let's uh, let's see if we can actually look at those files a bit I think we have hex dump here right so we can uh, we can go sys uh, firmware EFI vars and then see that we print out a few things. Um, let's have a look at something that we should know. So there is like boot current. Let's let's see what boot current is. So I would guess that this here is like, you know, an ID or something uh, referring to the boot menu. Um, that's a bit hard to tell. Uh, let's, let's see what we have here. So there is like uh, boot 001C. So the output we got was something like 060000 and so on, 1C00. So I assume that refers to this entry here, right? So that could be the case. I'm not sure if it is, but yeah, it could be. Anyway, this here says HDD and USB. So I actually booted from USB. So yeah, this might actually, uh, you know, fit here. Okay, so let's see, what else do we find here? So. What I find interesting, for example, is the uh, yada yada yada. So some more boot stuff actually. So the boot order, for example, let's look at the boot order. So the boot order should also, I guess, just you know, contain some references. Oh, ah, hey Zibel, nice to see you here. And well, long time no see. Actually, actually, I'm not seeing you. You're just seeing me. But yeah, it's uh, it's good to uh, read from you. So yeah, what what do we have here? The boot order. So what do we have? We have. 07 something something 1c 10 something something 11 12 13 18 yeah i guess this is uh essentially what um the boot something something refers to right so uh we we can actually grab for uh was it boot zero something in our tmp of ivars right so yeah here uh we actually find these um what do we have again? So we have zero, uh, quad zero, essentially. Uh, we have 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, and so on. And I think that is also what we see in the numbers up there. That wouldn't make sense. Uh, there is also 1A, 1B, 1C, 1D. Uh, 1D being the maximum. Well, down there we also have some other values, but yeah, whatever. Um, I guess this is like, you know, you can like configure a subset of a lot of devices, then you can configure the order and so on. Uh, can we use bubble sword on the boot order? Uh, well, uh, if you can roll out your own uh, firmware, you are free to do that. Uh, good luck with that. On, on some platforms, you can actually do that. We will actually see maybe today uh, that we just flash our own firmware on this laptop here, or, you know, we just modify the existing firmware. And let's see if we can still boot the machine, right? So we can use a hex editor and just uh, edit the file that we just dumped last time. All right. So uh, let's uh, hex dump some more. Um, let's hex dump the, uh, what else do we got? Uh, Sys firmware, EFI, EFI vars, e EFI vars. Uh, oh, that was actually the ESRT. You, you might have seen the directory there. All right, uh, capsule long mode buffer. Uh, that, that sounds dangerous. So that might actually be for, uh, you know, the capsule updates. So maybe the firmware can provide you with a buffer and then you can just write into that buffer. I don't know. Uh, there is con in, there is con out. Let's see what we get when we just uh, read con out. Um, it might be interesting, might be interesting. Okay, so, ah, right. I, I remember something. So yesterday uh, we looked at something in the flash that looked virtually similar to this year. I recall the 02, 01, OC, 00, D, 041, and so on. And uh, let me uh, quickly prepare something um, there, right. So uh, let me copy that D041 space 03 and so on. Do we find that in our firmware? Yes, we do. And that is actually in, oh, it says boot CD ROM something. Interesting. Uh, boot floppy something. I, I guess the 041030A something has uh, an actual meaning. Oh, well, I'm actually finding that a bunch of times. Anyway, so yeah, let me uh, quickly turn off the or. 
we could also shrink down the HMI capture. Yeah, that is actually a, a crappy thing to do. Uh, should we should we crop it? No, we'll just hide it. Okay, so uh, let, let us keep this here in mind. Uh, so we have uh, O2, O1, OC, OO, right? Let's see if we can find that here in our firmware image that we read out. So we're looking at this here. Yada, yada, yada. Con in, con out. O, 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 2, O, 1, O, C, O, O, D, O, 4, 1, O, 3, O, A. That is exactly what we were just seeing. So that is indeed just those values here uh, from the flash. So this is here from the address 8066 F, O, and so on. Or, or right after that, or uh, 6700, actually, you know. So something around here. So that is virtually what we are seeing here uh, output from the EFI variables. All right, so that is very interesting. Uh, let, let's see what else we can find in here. Uh, let's hack some a few more things. Um, the thing is, we, we don't really have a, a, a large system here. Um, we might actually uh, prepare something for next time uh, that is called CPU that will allow us to, you know, just um, connect to that system from somewhere else, you know, and then use our host tools on, on the other machine. Um, that might be a bit easier to navigate then. Okay, so we have this here, uh, Diag Splash Screen. I find that very interesting. Uh, can we reach that here? Uh, what do we get? Well, there is not much in there. Uh, it's uh, almost empty. Okay, what else do we get? Ah, there is there is really a lot of stuff. So um, I, I actually, uh, you know, I have three screens here around me now. So there is my laptop here. Well the laptop doing the streaming currently. The other, so actually it's four screens, but one of them is uh, you know not really in use. Um, we we have the uh, my my second laptop here where I'm sometimes showing stuff. Then I have uh, a third uh, screen here, which is you know actually just the output of the laptop that I have here. And that laptop here is uh, you know just showing a blank screen. I, I didn't find any other option with the uh, settings in the menu there. So yeah, it is what it is, but it's okay. So uh, what else do we get? So this here might be interesting. BDG, I don't know what that is. Boot diagnostics, maybe? There is a Lenovo config, FPR data function config, hidden, hidden setting. <laughs> what the heck is hidden setting? Okay, uh, that might be interesting. Uh, Lenovo logging. Let, let's look at hidden setting. What is hidden setting? Uh, I guess that is all zero. Um, it would be interesting to see what happens if we, you know, just uh, if we ju just essentially write uh, a bunch of ones or, uh, you know, all F to this year instead of zeros. Uh, maybe that will unhide a lot of settings that are also uh, then visible in the menu, uh, but, you know, would otherwise only be for like factory or something. I don't know. That would be interesting. Um, yeah, that, that is why we should, you know, have a hex editor. Do, do we actually find that here as well in, uh... oh, wow, what? <laughs> this is not interesting. Um, I'm, I'm seeing something in the image that we dumped. So look at this here. Uh, it says something here about grub. I have never actually run grub on this thing. As far as I know, or have I? I don't know. So not, not to my knowledge. Uh, but this might actually, wait, this is from one dot drum. This is not even, yeah, this is, this is one dot drum. So this is from before I ever turned on the machine. So somebody has run something uh, with grub in it. Interesting. So yeah, but I'm interested now in the Lenovo hidden setting thing. Uh, Lenovo logging. So it should be the next thing, I guess. Uh, con out, con out again. Uh, we can search for H. I, D, D, E. Maybe we'll find it that way. Uh, no. Uh, D, D, E, N, something. Hidden. Yeah, it's, it's a bit hard to uh, search this way. Um, what else could we search for? We could search for O, V, O, H. Oh, look. There we go. So yeah, this is exactly what we just saw. So this here is like all the zeros, right? So 
was actually um so i'm i'm just looking at at my uh, other screen here uh so the 6 7 here is the g in setting then we have lots of zeros uh on on the screen here i'm actually seeing a 7 there is a 07 here yeah i'm i'm not sure if that is uh, something different um i have no idea to be honest but yeah i mean we're we're here for fun right so we want to figure things out uh so how about we use a hex editor on this file and see if we can change something um hex 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 dump hex hex edit hex editor view and edit files in hexadecimal or in ascii full screen curses hex editor that sounds very convenient uh let's go with two dot rom and actually uh you know what i don't own those files so let's quickly change that uh shown shown me 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 let's uh let's let's get all the roms in our hands okay so now we hex editor 2.rom and we're going to s can we just navigate somehow can we search in here uh oh oh uh control t is go to offset uh offset would be eight two seven eight b zero all right here we go so yeah, I guess uh, this is it. I don't, I don't know which of these zeros are actually meaningful. It could be that this zero here is uh, still a part of the string or something. So let's change this here to a one maybe, or to an F. Oh no, let's, let's do this here. Let's just put a bunch of Fs in here and uh, see what we get. Uh, let's just put all the Fs here. Okay, uh, that should be enough for now. Uh, control, exit, save, whatever. Okay. Um, nice so we will we will flash back that firmware image and uh you know see what it gets us um i also want to do something in 3.rom and in 3.rom i want to see if we can uh change uh, some string here so the string i want to change now is what we saw in the menu and i uh you know i, I recall seeing this year so this year is like uh the firmer version right so let, let's see if we can find that in here uh, I, I guess there should also be like R zero, like, you know, always with a zero byte between and so on. Uh, I, E, etc. Do we get that? Yes, it's down there. Uh, I remember finding this twice. So it's once here and another time there. Uh, but they're actually not far apart. So that would be uh, which offset? E, B, B, 6, C, O. So we go to ebb6co and there we go so in, instead of e um let, let us put something different here uh let us go with um hang on a second uh i am seeing things yeah we we need to uh move this here somehow okay huh Right, so uh, capital R is 50, oh, this is not hexadecimal, this is decimal. Okay, uh, that explains a lot of things, because hexadecimal would be like 4-4. Four, four. Um, yeah, you like the shell turtle. Yeah, it's because, uh, you know, this is the fish shell, and a turtle also has a shell. So it sort of makes sense, I guess. Can we just switch the view and, you know, change it to, oh, look, there is text mode char set spacing oh a, bun a bunch of settings in there uh can we just um i don't know what, what does control r do char set i don't know e for text mode uh oh that looks like garbage uh not very friendly uh there is redraw search go to offset exit we have a manual man hex 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 editor uh all text high bit disk force insert okay view is text dump uh we would like to see hex instead of oh there is ascii and epsidic uh that is funny binary calculator huh editing this is only supported in Linux and openbsd well unlucky you if you're on a different operating system i guess oh switch from hex to text representation 
Uh, switch from hex to text representation. Okay, we can just uh, push tab, I guess. Yeah, let, let's see what happens. Oh, oh we, we would jump from left to right. Okay, I, I see, I see. Uh, but uh, we're not seeing anything. Right, okay. Uh, let's uh, put a C here. Y, R, E, V, O, L, T. Uh, let, let's see if that actually works. Uh, let's exit and save the file. Okay, so we now have two things that we can just flash back and, you know, we, we can see if the uh, firmware is actually checking everything in the firmware, right? So I assume that the settings are not being checked because those are variables, right? So the variables, you know, there wouldn't be like a signature on it or something. Otherwise, the firmware itself would have the keys for assigning it. So that wouldn't make sense, right? There might be keys in the TPM for doing the signature and stuff, but that would be very complicated. So I assume we can just flash back uh, our image number two and it would just work. Okay, so yeah, let me just uh, shut down the machine uh, using the power off command here. Um, put the USB drive aside and uh, let's take it apart. So it's something we already did yesterday. Um, so yeah. I'm now on a different USB hub, uh, not yesterday, it was two days ago, Never mind. Um, anyway, I have a different USB hub now, so we were having some trouble with the uh, writing to the flash, or, well, reading from the flash, no, nevertheless, the programmer. And uh, let's see if we still have that issue today with the uh, different hub, the different USB hub. Um, all right, so, I have my flash part here. Hang on, I got to attach the uh, nice clip again. Clip, clip. So as always, make sure to have everything unplugged, right? No battery, no power on the machine and so on. And uh, yeah, actually, I indeed still have the battery attached, so let me detach that first. I think I actually did that at some point yesterday because I wanted to check if it's charging or something like that. Or because I actually wanted to close the case and, you know, the cable got in the way or something. Alrighty, so... The uh, clip is attached and we are going to first see that we can get a dump again because you know always always have a backup uh, <laughs> let me just make sure that we you know don't touch anything alrighty so uh, sudo flash rom we are going to read this as 6 dot rom and that looks like it's working just fine. So yeah, this will take a few seconds now. Oh, no, I think it's like 10 seconds or something. Um, then we will take another backup again, and then we will write back our 2.rom and see if it still boots up. And I think it was 2.rom where, uh, yeah, we, we just enabled the hidden settings thing. Uh, actually, I just recall that we only edited one of the uh, strings right now, so only this one here. Um, I'm not sure if that's actually the one that would be showing up in the firmware menu. It might be the other one, but yeah, we you know we can go back and forth on this and so on. And FlashRom is uh, you know smart enough when writing, so yeah, it will be a bit more efficient than you know writing the whole flash. It would really just update you know the few parts that are actually uh, needed. Oh. Of course, I forgot something. Okay, so we will <laughs> we will have to um, start over with this uh, because in the previous uh, copies of the um, dumps that we had, uh, we did actually not have the uh, display output enabled on uh, uh, enabled on HDMI. So yeah, yeah, I, I would just create a copy of the files here. Anyway, so we will check MD5 sum, and as you can see, we just got the same checksum again for both 6.rom and 7.rom. So, uh, sudo chown again, um, and we are going to uh, hex hex editor, uh, 
7.rom now, but let's actually do it a bit different. So let's copy 7.rom to uh, thoroughvault.rom. That is where I will, um, you know, put my uh, name. And then we will uh, do like uh, hidden settings.rom. Um, Next editor, uh, editor, hidden, hidden settings.rom. So this is where we will enable the hidden settings again. So where did we, uh, where did we go for that? Um, I, I just forgot. So yeah, it might've been smart to, uh, note that down, right? So yeah, let's, uh, open an editor. So let's put this address here. This is the address where we find this string. We can actually just copy the whole line. Uh, yeah, Let, let's do it like this. Let's note down the whole line. Uh, we don't need nine numbers here right now. So set no new, no, no numbers. Um, I want the second occurrence of that, this one here. So yeah, we also write that one down. Uh, what do we call this files? Uh, mod.md, whatever. Um, yeah, let's uh, put those in triple backticks. Uh, yeah, we, we can put this somewhere later for, uh, you know, reading up on it. I don't know where yet. Anyway, uh, we search for OVOH. This is how we found it. So this is at, uh, so let's put it this way. At this address, triple backticks again. Uh, Right. So this is the offset. How do we go there again? Control T. So we go to eight, two, seven, eight, a zero. And there we go. Uh, we just put a bunch of F's here, right? I think we just started here and then just went like all F here. F, 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 exit and save. And now we're going to do the same thing again with the uh, server vault ROM and we are going to jump to uh, EBB6COCO -C -O, like this and we are uh, going to change it here into, hang on, how, where, what is this? Yeah, whatever. Okay, so this will read C Y R E lowercase e. V O L T. And let's actually edit also the second occurrence. So that was at uh, E B B. What? Ah, there. Uh, control, whatever, E C D 290. So let's also put my name in here C Y R E V O L T. There we go. Exit and save. And now we're going to flash from uh, not dash R, but we're going to dash W, W for write. And let's write the hidden settings first, right? So let's see what happens. Um, working with risk five. No, we're not working with risk five here. Uh, in, in fact, we're just uh, working with uh, raw binaries a bit here. So yeah, to, today is not uh, very much about the um, platform. So like, you know, not, not the ISA, uh, but uh, yeah, mo it's it's mostly about uh, the uh, UFI operating system. So, you know, where, uh, you know, you have like drivers and uh, image parsers and all of that. So uh, we're looking at uh, this year today, uh, the logo fail vulnerability that affects lots of lots of laptops and is tracked in a bunch of CVEs here. Very nice finding by the company Binarly. Okay, uh, it's writing to the flash, it's verifying the flash. So yeah, as I told you, the um, flash room tool is actually very smart about this. So yeah, it already did the writing in like, you know, no time. Now the verification part is where it's comparing my local image again with uh, what's been written. So it's reading out the flash again, essentially, and then, you know, does a like byte for byte or uh, chunk wise comparison or something. So yeah, this will just uh, take another few seconds again, but that will be very quick. And here we go, it's been verified. So uh, first thing, um, unplug the 
uh, programmer. So always do that, right? So first unplug the programmer, then detach the clip. And then we're going to start the machine again and see if it still boots. Yeah, and I'm, I'm gonna put the cover underneath again because, um, you know, otherwise it's uh, sort of resting on its own chips. That isn't very good for the laptop, for sure. All right, uh, we're plugged in again and I will go back to HDMI capture. So yeah, this is uh, what, we, what we saw last time here. Let's see what we get now. Ah, uh, it does show the Lenovo thing. To interrupt startup, press something. Some It, it, it said some settings change and then just flash again. Hey, you, you're not seeing that. Ah, uh, let me check if I can, if I can uh, get us back the image. Oh, there we go. Press enter. I just press enter. Okay. Uh, I guess it's taking a second or two. I don't know what happens. Press one of the following. Escape to resume normal startup F1. F1. We want to see uh, the menu. We want to see the hidden settings. Do we get any hidden settings now? Um, do we Do we see anything that we hadn't seen before? I don't know. Security, startup. Um, well, I'm not seeing anything special here. Maybe under CPU. I don't know. Hyperthreading is just one option. Uh, anything under display. Nothing new or fancy here. Do we have anything else like keyboard, mouse? No. Yeah, no nothing special in here really. So yeah, maybe it didn't have any effect uh, what we just did. Um, yeah, whatever. So yeah, maybe though, uh, there is this um, uh, exit exit discarding. Uh, there is also this here, uh, the app menu. Uh, this here, diagnostics, splash screen, Lenovo diagnostics. Maybe we, we find something interesting in here now, uh, but I'm not too sure. Yeah, there is like a system information tool. I've actually never looked into this here before, so I can't really tell what it is. Um, what do we have? About navigation is arrows, enter is enter space. So we, we press space to enter. Can we also just press return? Okay. Uh, there is a bunch of information here, like, I don't know, serial number, uh, whatever. The display name, manufacturer, uh, of the display. Yeah, I don't know. What do we have under PCI Express? Nothing too special. Well, uh, yeah, I, I guess we don't have anything in here, but let's actually see what happens when we now boot an operating system again. So I will put in the USB drive again. And uh, yeah, let's see um what we now get when we hex dump the hidden settings from the efi variable so back in sys sys firmware firmware efi efi vars and then uh it was called lenovo hidden settings something lenovo 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 here well here is the f's that we wrote right so that worked without any issue Right, so the firmware is still starting with it. I don't know what those hidden settings are anyway. Um, it might be that the uh, you know the other Fs would uh, uh, the other zeros here would actually ha had some effect. Uh, but let's do the following now. So um, we can look at this in, in comparison also here on my laptop, right? So we can look at the hidden settings from. Uh, let me just quickly jump to that spot again and show that so here um you you remember that with the efi variables we were seeing like 07 and then 00000 and then came all the f's like two rows full and then 
uh, there were like six occurrences of zero zero. I, I can still see that here. So yeah, uh, we were searching for. Oh hey, hang on. Uh, we're looking for eight two seven eight nine zero. Okay. So this year, um, I don't know what the first o o o seven is actually for, uh, or o seven o o. But it's definitely that, um, yeah, yeah. Some, some, something is a bit funny there. So this here is apparently still part of the variable, and this here as well. And then there is O seven O O as the start of the variable. Um, I, I guess that means something in the EFI variable space, but I'm not too sure. Anyway, um, yeah, that was a fun experiment. I'm going to shut down the machine again, so that we can, uh, you know. Uh, let me quickly power off. Uh, I will shut down the machine again and then we will write back the next image to the flash and see what happens then. So let's uh, look at the one where, you know, I just put my name in it. So it's it's a bit tedious to uh, do this all the time now, but, uh, you know, we're, we're here for fun. So we, we do that. Uh, I would actually like to put something between the board I'm using for flashing and my laptop, just to make sure I don't accidentally break it. Um, well, actually, we have a we have a bunch of postcards here, like uh, this one, um, which is now flipped for you, but I don't care. I, I will just use it here for isolation, right? So... Um, We need the clip again. All right, clip is attached. And let us write back the image. Uh, we're going to write sudo flash rom yada 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 dash w dot rom. There we go. So yeah, it's uh, reading the old flash contents again. So, you know, that is for uh, verification parts and I don't know what. Um, yeah, that, that will take a few seconds. Then it's going to write our update back again and uh, check and yeah, essentially what we just saw above here. So let, let's see what happens. Um, maybe I also just added it a bit too much. Uh, you know, it could be that only one of those uh, strings here could actually be updated. Um, it could also be that you know none of them could be updated. So yeah, we, we, we can figure this out now. Okay, it's verifying the flash. Um, yeah, the erase and write part was was very quick because it, you know, so when it reads out the chip, you know, then it does like a comparison against what we want to write to it. That will figure, oh, we actually only need to write these and these blocks because everything else, you know, is already, uh, you know, as we want it to be. That will only write those few blocks. And then it will do the verification again by reading back and comparing again. So yeah, it's actually a very smart by flash from uh, because, you know, writing to a flash part, um, you can only do it so and so many times. It's not like, you know, the flash chip is going to die very soon, but you know, you always want to be safe. Hmm. And it was a uh, very quick once again. So let's unplug again. Right, and uh, the cover back on, and uh, let's plug things in again. HDMI and power supply. And let's, uh, let's see if we can uh, get the HDMI capture again. I hope this works now immediately. Power button is pressed. Oh, 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 it looks like it won't power on. That is very interesting. So it might be that it actually doesn't like my name in it, which is a, you know, a shame essentially. Uh, but yeah, what do we do? 
Okay, so we will write back something else. Um, so what I want to do now is I want to uh, copy 7.rom again to my name and then hex editor my name thing again. And we're now going to change one of the strings. So let's only change the uh, second current, I guess, ECD 290, because I actually just, you know, have it here. So this here will be C Y R E V O L T. Uh, exit and save. And uh, we're going to do the pseudo flash ROM thing again. Uh, but first, I need to take things apart again. All right. Uh, it's becoming a habit by now, so it's uh, it's not too hard and not too horrible. Just a bit stupid that I, you know, <laughs> need to turn the laptop upside down again all the time. But, you know, we're still doing it here for science, right? Uh... All right, clip back on, looking good. Plugging in and writing, there we go. So, so it's not too boring, I will uh, show you what's happening here. Ta -dee, ta -da -da. Uh, nothing, nothing very special, nothing you hadn't seen before. Um, yeah, if, if that doesn't work, you know, we will Again, start with another fresh copy and only edit the other currents here, uh, which was at that offset. Yeah. And if that doesn't work, then, uh, you know, we will just uh, flash back um, uh, another image and uh, yeah, be done with that part for the time being. Um, so there was this, uh, this thing that I said where, you know, you might just uh, need to put an image somewhere on the ESP, the ESI, EFI system partition, and then write in uh, an EFI variable, and then you could show your own splash screen. Uh, we will need to figure that out. Um, I actually heard that in the Archinox wiki, uh, there is some article on that. So let's search for Archinox uh, boot splash custom, uh, how to set boot screen. Uh, category boot splash, boot splash in languages. Okay, uh, FB splash and Plymouth. Well, um, how about we search for logo fail? Can we, yeah, UFI logo fail. Yada yada. Uh, do we find something here? Something about Len Lenovo. Lenovo. Enter firmware setup without function keys. Um, like there is a special edition Lenovo. Yeah, you, you can also use, uh, you know, your operating system to boot into the menu, right? So I guess this year, uh, you know, would set some UFI variable and that would mean on, on next boot, you would then show the uh, configuration menu or something. Yeah, well. Oh, by the way, if you worked with a tool like EFI Boot Manager before, uh, this actually also just writes UFI variables or uh, EFI variables. It's really nothing fancy about it. Yada, yada, yada. Uh, here you go. Plymouth. No, we're, we're not interested in uh, Plymouth. We are uh, Lenovo. We, we want this with Lenovo. How to change the BIOS boot screen logo image on IT tutorials. Changing BIOS boot logo and Lenovo ThinkPad. If you find a custom boot logo on notebooks, yada, yada, yada. How I change the screen to Lenovo logo on yada, yada. Yeah, I guess that isn't too helpful here right now. Uh, loss of custom boot scratch screen during F W Opti Manager update. Uh, uh, oh. uh, yeah, this is by the way a very cool tool. So F W Opti is the firmware update tool uh, for Linux and also for other operating systems. I think it's available on FreeBSD also now. Um, yeah, a really cool tool. So you know that gets you the updates from your vendor. 
All right, so firmware is written and let us connect again, close the cover. And see what happens. Oh, hang on. Uh, what did I do actually? Oh, did I? Yeah, I, I, yeah. Uh, this time we modified something at the uh, later address, and uh, yeah, let let's see what happens. So, yeah, let's turn on the HDMI capture screen thingy again. Uh, I'm turning on the laptop, and nothing happens. Yeah. Oh, well. Uh, next round, right? So now we're gonna edit the other occurrence and see if that works. And if it doesn't, well, then that's actually a good thing because the firmware should be able to detect such issues and, you know, not just boot something arbitrary, right? You, you don't want to, uh, you know, execute arbitrary code in your firmware. So yeah, well done, I guess. So, clip back on, there we go, and connect the programmer, and, oh yeah, by the way, so uh, we need to copy again, we need to hex editor again, so now we're looking for ebb6c0 there, and we're going to write my name in there, because funny alrighty uh, that's it control X and now sudo flash drum write it back so I hope this is not too boring so uh, and because it's actually very repetitive and you know not too awarding uh, I'm, I'm going to stop this part after this year and uh, actually you're not seeing it because yeah there we go yeah so yeah in, in the next steps we're going to uh, start doing some other funny stuff so we now have a uh, you know we now have a USB drive that we can use to uh, boot our own system what we're going to do is uh, we're going to take a backup of the, uh, you know, the, the first sectors of that drive. Well, not, not really sectors, but, you know, the first blocks or whatever you want to call it. The first bytes, essentially. And then we're going to edit those bytes. And we're going to write it back to the USB drive and see if we can uh, crash the firmware with it. So, uh, what I want to do now is, um, uh, whatever that issue... Uh, I, I want to see how a uh, GUID partition table actually looks like. So, where do we find that uh, GUID, GUID partition partition uh, table structs? We need the data structures, right? So, what does Wikipedia write? Oh, look, the UFI.org website also has something on that. Okay. So GPT and MBR disk layout comparison. Oh, interesting. So this was an MBR. Uh, that is not what we're interested in. Uh, we want to see the GUID, GPT, GUID partition table, or GUID, whatever you want to call it. Um, okay, it looks like it starts with a primary and then there is a backup partition table somehow and partition somewhere in between or something something called pmbr pmbr it's like mbr but with a p maybe Par partition something okay look a gpt header so there's a signature a revision a header size and so on um yeah let me actually um uh plug in the usb drive here and then we can see if that is indeed what we find on it so and in the meantime yeah we're going a bit back and forth now but you know let's uh to gain some efficiency here so yeah, this is actually the last attempt of uh, writing back a uh an edited firmware image just to see if it boots if it does it would be funny if it would show my name in it but i doubt that it's gonna happen all right 
connect this, connect that, and uh, show you the screen again. And uh, we are going to see if it works. Oh, it does not. Okay, well, how unfortunate. Yep. Yep, yep. Yeah, you know, it would just uh, turn on some lights and then uh, just go off again immediately. Okay. That is very unfortunate, but yeah, whatever. So we're now going to write back the file 7.rom, which is our backup. And, you know, we always take backups because we're smart people, right? Imagine we didn't have a backup of this here. What would we do? Well, maybe this is actually also an incentive for you if you haven't done this before to also sometimes take a backup of your firmware. Maybe before updating, maybe before you get malware on your mainboard, you know, you never know. Alrighty, so uh, we are going to look at the sash dev sda file here, and that file is actually a, a disk. Uh, we're going to give a block size, the block size is 512, uh, oh, let's actually go with 1024. The output file, well, no, hang on. Uh, no, no dash here, just BS no, without a dash. Now we get give a count, so the count would be a one. So we are going to dump one kilobyte, the first kilobyte of that drive. Uh, the output file would be uh, USB, whatever, A dot bin, right? Uh oh. What, what wrong did I do? Uh, and recognize operand BS. Uh, are you sure? B BS equals. Okay, that looks better. And again, of course, uh, a regular user cannot access that file. All right, so we got one kilobyte. That is USB A dot bin. We're going to look if this here looks just like what we saw on the uh, website here. So that website is the uh, UFI.org documentation. Uh, do we see something that looks like, like this here? Uh, identifies EFI compatible uh, compatible partition table header uh, must contain the ASCII string EFI part. Hang on, I've seen that and I've seen that right here. EFI part. Okay, so it's at offset 200. Interesting. EFI part. And then comes, uh, I don't know, 0000. zero, zero, zero. Uh, that would be the revision revision number for this header. This revision value is not related to the UFI specification version. The header is version 1.0, so the correct value is this year. So we should see that value. Oh, what? hang on. Where is it? Here. Yeah. So this is 0001. We need to read backwards, um, you know, pair by pair. So one pair here is uh, like... Uh, one one uh, one byte essentially. So o o o one o o o o. Okay, that uh, that looks good. Interesting. Uh, size and bytes of the GPT header. Oh, that is interesting. The size information. So what uh, what if we just write something arbitrary? So byte length four. Uh, the checksum for the oh okay. The size and then the checksum reserved must be zero. Okay, my LBA, my my LBA, not not your LBA. Ready, my LBA. Okay, the LBA that contains this data structure, which data structure? I don't understand that to be honest. LBA is that like logical something block something? LBA. I, I've, I've heard and seen that before. Anyway, um, last usable LBA, first usable. It uh, looks like uh, they wanted to put this in asterisk or something, and it sort of failed. I don't know. Partition. Partition entry LBA. Okay, a uh, number of partition entries. Interesting. Number of partition entries in the GUID partition entry array. Hey, how about we just uh, use a very large number for that one here. Uh, that is byte offset 80. So 80 is uh, 
uh, let's uh, let's hex 80. 80 is uh, hex 50. Oh, that actually makes sense, right? So yeah, five, five by 16 is 80. Okay, hex 50. So at 250 here, this year, uh, this should show us the number of entries, number of partition entries. Okay, um, interesting. I thought it would be like two or maybe three. So let, let's see, if we use uh, G parted, parted or, or just parted, parted, parted dash H. So we, we say parted and then we give it a, a file. Let's say parted and then USB A dot bin, uh, P print assertion. Oh, look at that. Uh, we uh, just uh, crash our own uh, software here. So apparently GNU parted uh, will crash if you just give it some something malformed. It will not recover from it. Huh, how unfortunate. Maybe you can also just exploit that thing. Um, yeah, it, it would be actually funny, right? So if you give someone a, a malformed USB drive and you say, uh, could you check that in your partition tool? And then, you know, you just trigger some ex exploit in the partition tool. You know, things like that happen all the time. Um, Anyway, uh, so we're gonna use uh, parted on def sda uh, with the with the magical rights of the sudo. Uh, we're going to print that, and it says number one and number two. So it's in, indeed just uh, two entries, and it's not like what this year suggests. So this year suggests that we have more. Now this is actually eight. Is that re oh? Hang on. Or is that the number of partition entries? Because it looks like that might be it. Four, number of entry, uh, partition entries. Huh, interesting. Oh, wait. Well, whatever, I don't know. Uh, yeah, but we gotta figure this out, so what would be uh, this year at, uh, well, hex, hex 40, that is like um, four by 16, that is 64. So what is at 60, 64? That is the disk grid until uh, 72. So 72 would, no, that's, this is, uh, oh, right, 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 okay. So the disk grid is apparently, uh, this year, I guess, that that would be the disk grid, right? And then uh, the other uh, eight entry, or uh, the the eight bytes here, that would be the partition entry LBA. And then comes number of partition entries. But why does it not say? Why does it not say two here? I would have expected that to say two. At least it's consistent with the next entry, which is uh, size of partition entry. Number of partition entries, size of partition entry. Interesting. And then comes uh, another four bytes of uh, this year. That would be the partition entry array CRC32. So yeah, that, that could be a checksum here. Looks like enough entropy for a checksum. Okay. Um, how about we just increase the uh, number of partition entries? Um, so some something is a bit uh, weird here. Anyway, uh, let's uh, let's detach the clip again and uh, see that the laptop boots again because that already just uh, you know finished. All right, uh, detached, cover, cover, cover back on. And let's see that we get the uh, output back here. HMI capture. Yeah, that looks like booting up again. Nice. Except now we don't have my name in it, which would have been funny. But yeah, what do you do? 
did just say that something changed again. Yeah, whatever. Um, yeah, you know, sometimes it just randomly reboots and shows you like a one millisecond error message or something. It's it's a bit strange. Anyway, uh, we're not that interested in the Lenovo screen, right? So what we want to do still is uh, we want to see if we can trigger something. So yeah, let me switch back to uh, here. Yeah. Let, let's see what happens if we uh, if we just edit this here manually. So uh, make dir uh, USB hack, CD USB hack. So we copy the uh, USB A thing here uh, to uh, here. And then we just hex hex editor the USB A bin. All right. So yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry about the uh, uh, non readability here. But um, yeah, it is what it is. So I'm still wondering why this here is not the number of partitions. It should be. It cannot be uh, hex 80 partitions. That would be like lots of partitions. That doesn't really make any sense. Huh. I mean, let, let's check again. So this here is EFI part. This is at 200, right? So that would be the zero offset. And then the uh, plus 80, zero plus 80, but 80 hex, right? So 80 as in here, hex, hex 80 is 50. So that should be literally here. That doesn't look like number of partition entries. Partition entry LBA is before it. And the LBA is actually eight bytes. So this here would be the LBA. I don't know. I actually feel like we should just turn this into a three now, uh, write it back and then see what happens. Okay. So we're going to sudo if equals USBA thingy of equals slash dev slash SDA like this. And uh, oh, how about we put DD in here as well. Okay. And now we're going to say part it again. And we're going to sh we're going to show the oh the primary primary GPT table the T is actually for table is corrupt, but the backup appears okay. So that will be used okay or cancel. Funny, uh, we're going to do the following now since we uh, just uh, sort of corrupted the table. So the thing is, we haven't updated the checksum, right? Um, let's see uh, what happens if we insert the USB drive now into the uh, laptop. So let's see if the laptop will still happily boot. Uh, I'm, I'm really curious uh, how the uh, firmware handles the uh, hang on there. See, it just boots. That is very funny. Uh, does it even check the checksum of the, okay. If it doesn't even, so either it uses the backup or it doesn't actually check the checksum, right? Interesting. Okay. Uh, let's turn it off again. Pa power, power, power off. Ah, wow. Let's see what happens if we write other funny stuff to this here. So um, back to back to documentation. Number of partition entries. LBA. Disk GUID can be used to uniquely identify the disk. Yeah, we can probably use an arbitrary one here. Um, 
Last usable LBA. Oh, that is also interesting, right? So what 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 do we have here? Uh, last usable LBA would be. Uh, we we could also just uh, write a parser for this here in Rust, right? Would that make sense? Um, I I guess it would. Uh, yeah, may, maybe some other time. Uh, we we've already spending uh I know a good one and a almost one and a half hours here. Well, an, an hour and 20 minutes. Yeah, let, let's still go on a bit. Let's let's see if, if we can trigger and crash something. Yeah, ne next time, you know, we, we can come up with something a bit more sophisticated. Um, oh, right, yeah, uh, the header size. Let, let's uh, check the header size. So that would be at offset 12. Uh, 12 is uh, still in that first row here, right? So this is four bytes. Eight bytes. Uh, am I am I counting right? Twelve, and then comes this here five five C header size. Right. So, no no. This is the revision. This here is the revision, and now this here is the number of header bytes. Right. Header size size and bytes of the GPT header. Okay. Um. It says. Okay. We we can check this here. It says five C. That means it goes up until 5C. That would be here. So that 5 here is the CRC checksum. And the CRC checksum is this here. Everything else uh, is uh, not part of the header anymore or something. I don't know. Partition entry array CRC32. That would be at 88. And 88 is like hex, 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 88. Would be five eight five eight. Oh, that would be that would be this year actually. Uh, hang on, uh, I'm I'm confusing things a bit here. So where was the uh, header CR? Oh, hang on, the header CRC comes after the header size, so it's uh, it's this year. This year is the checksum of the header. Okay, interesting. Yeah, whatever. Uh, let's just claim that the header is uh, like, I don't know, uh, all Fs large, right? So we're going to hex editor the thing. Uh, we're going to write some junk to it. EFI part, and then this here. So instead of 5C, we're going to say FF, 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 FF. Let's see what happens. Uh, we're, we're, we're saving it and uh, we're uh, pseudo DDing it back to the USB drive. And we're going to put out the laptop again. Let's see what happens. It's uh, powering on. Okay. It's uh, the flash drive is Blinking. Oh, it's still loading the Linux kernel. Interesting. Okay. So, you know, there is uh, the backup uh, GPT, right? So let's see. Oh, let's power you off again. Uh, let, let's see if we can actually mess with the uh, backup GPT. So where would we find the backup GPT? How do we figure this out? Um, reserved my LBA. Okay, so if there is a backup GPT, it should also have this uh, same signature, right? The EFI part stuff. Uh, in other words, uh, this uh, constant here. So let's let's search for another occurrence of EFI part. Do, do we do we see something in here? Not in the first kilobyte, right? So we're going to do something very horrible. We're going to uh, XXD the dev. Oh, look, I, I did this once with the uh, dev MTD. Oh, MTD is actually my uh, flash part here. So we're going to do this with SDA and we're going to search for EFI part. Okay, we're going to search for another account of EFI part. <coughs> Uh, do we get that anywhere? 
Oh, look, it says EFI down here again. Whatever that is for. Uh, let's cancel the search. EFI system partition, a Linux file system. So if you, uh, this here, uh, hang on a second. Hang on a second. Was this here being restored or something? Yes, it was. See, the firmware just wrote to the USB drive and it restored uh, what was on it. So I guess it actually did look at the backup thing. That is very interesting. Okay. So yeah, we, we should really find that uh, second copy of the... Can we print that here somehow? Can we or can't we? Um, if we understand, uh, hang on, if I understand correctly, it was, oh, no, not, not found. Uh oh. I thought that would be like after the first, uh, partition somehow. Right. So that is how I understood this here. There was some, this here, this graphic, the, uh, backup partition table. Oh, hang on. That here is only the primary partition table or is it generally the... Hmm. Do we find a different ID for backups? Partition containing a legacy MBR, unused entry, EFI system partition. Well, I, I guess we will find the C12 something here. So that would be here, uh, right, uh, GUIDs. You, you need to read a bit back and forth uh, to find those. So this here, you see this here, 0, 0, A0, C93, and so on. That is this thing here. So this here is the EFI system partition. But if you look at this here, you see, it says 28 here, but here it starts with 28, then comes 73, and so on. So the C1 is actually here. So here you read backwards, then you read, you know, partially backwards and then forward again. I don't know why they did that. That is just how GUIDs work. So yeah, it's uh, it's really weird. There is actually, you know, like different, like there is GUID, there is UID, and then there is like different of these notations for whatever reason. I don't know. Uh, okay. So here is my guess. Uh, I, I think we should find the um, the checksum a second time, right? So if this here is the checksum, I would expect to find the same thing somewhere again, further down. And uh, let's see. The thing is, uh, the drive is like, uh, 32 gigabytes in size, so it can take a very long time to skin the whole thing. And it says not found. Well, uh, that is uh, very unfortunate. I'm not even sure if this year is properly searching everything. Uh, yeah. Anyway, um, what else can we do in order to try to find this? Right, if we have a second copy of the partition table, uh, we would find a second copy of the entries, right? So we should find another occurrence of uh, this year. So this year is the ESP GUID and oh, look. But that's just a coincidence. Is it? Yeah, it is. Or is it? No, hang on. That actually looks like it, uh, but it might also be just a part of some code or something. Uh, because I have a few things on here, like, you know, this here. Oh, hang on. That is literally just the first occurrence here. Sorry. Oh, 
Yeah, I, I think I just press the wrong button or something. Okay, so, but that is very interesting. It is indeed, again, Uh, I, I think I pressed the plus one button instead of page up. That could be like the home key or something. Yeah, this here is indeed like uh, so something, something. That looks like um, it could be the EFI shell. So I have a copy of the EFI shell on here. Okay, let's keep searching. Uh, yeah, here it actually says EFI shell version even. So it has that GUID baked in a bunch of times. Even here, and here, and here. All right, uh, wow. Well, the um, EFI shell uh, sits here in the first partition. Huh, okay. Uh, I'm, not, I'm not sure how we would find the uh, backup here to be honest, because that here looks like uh, it's not, it's not cooperating. Okay. So can we get that from GNU parted? Does it tell us like help rescue? Uh, rescue a lost partition near start and end. MK label, MK part name, print. Print devices, free, list, comma, all. Display the partition table, available devices, free space, all found partitions or a particular partition. Uh, print all. Yeah, no idea what that actually, oh, uh, that also looks at uh, other drives, I guess. Yeah, it looks like it's also looking at my uh, NVMe and stuff. Yeah, whichever. Yeah, this here says, uh, well, it's an SSD, whatever. Yep, yep. Error. Unrecognized disk label. That is okay. You don't have to recognize everything. So a line check, help, MK label, no idea. Oh well. But yeah, it's uh, quite quite mysterious that the firmware was able to dis uh, to recover. Uh, and also GNU parted said something like we had a corruption somehow, which was intentional, right? Um, does it does it say anything about the backup 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 here, except in the like image? Where is the image? Oh, look, look what else we find here. Huh? Backup backup backup. A primary and a backup partition table for redundancy. The primary GPT header must be located in LBA1, i.e. the second logical block, and the backup GPT header must be located in the last LBA of the device. Within the GPT header, the my LBA field contains the LBA of the GPT header itself. Okay, that's what the my refers to. Okay. Huh. Uh, what is the LBA? Is it like logical block something? So if it's the, uh, if it's the last logical block, uh, can we can we get the uh, size of it? Uh, like sudo ls dash l uh, def sda. No, that doesn't give us the size. Yeah, does uh, does part of it have something to uh, print the size in a way, like you know the size in bytes? 
So I would really want to, you know, just dump the last like two kilobytes or something and look at that because that is where I would expect the backup to be. P. Uh, help. So P is for print, right? Um, you can say P something. Huh. Oh, unit. Uh, set the default unit to unit. Uh, unit. What units can I use? Uh, which which unit? Uh, not not compact. Uh, byte. Invalid token. Uh, by by bytes. B. Oh, okay. Alrighty, now we get the bytes. Interesting. Look at this here. Uh, the first and the second partition. This here is start and end. Okay, so this is actually what we want. I'm just not too sure why this is where it ends because it looks a bit random. Uh, oh, oh, look at this here. This is what we want, right? So, uh, USB hack and the notes dot md. Uh, notes, 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 notes dot md. So, uh, disk size. It's not really a disk in that sense, but you know. Uh, bytes. Okay, so if we uh, if we take that number, we take that number and divide by ten twenty four. Uh, we get this number. Okay. So we're going to do the following. We're going to sudo dd. Now if equals def sda. We are taking the same block size. We're taking account of two. No, we're actually not using that. We're going to say skip equals. And then we're going to do this here, uh, minus two. So we want the last two blocks, right? So this is USB A underscore end dot bin. Right. Okay. So we successfully got the last two kilobytes. And that looks like a lot of zero. Oh, there we go. So here we have our backup partition table thingy. Okay. Um, Okay, so let's hack up a script so that we don't mess this up very much. Uh -huh, love the show. Oh, sorry. Yeah, I was just reading all the stuff in the chat. I thought there was something new. Okay, so what I want to first do is I want a copy of USB A underscore end dot bin. Uh, I will put that here. Okay, so now sudo sudo dd. Uh, we did this here. Uh, we call it flashback.sh, okay, just uh, for the fun of it. Okay, so we are going to say of equals def sda. We're going to skip this and we're going to say if is this here. And in the same fashion, sudo dd, this thing here. Um, We're doing this here. Oops. Okay. Yeah, let's uh, let's use the same block size all the time, just just to be safe. Okay. So, uh, this here is a a uh, shell 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 script. Okay. And now, because we want to actually mess with things, we're going to hex editor the second file, USB A and dot bin. And what we want to do is, uh, we want to mess with these uh, numbers here, right? So we want to say F, 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 write back that file and uh, not not this here. How do we exit? Exit and save. Oh, yeah, I, I gotcha. Uh, just exit without saving. Quit without saving. Yeah, that's uh, 
sudo chown uh me star dot star whatever okay oh maybe maybe i missed something before and uh didn't actually write to this here yeah whatever we're, we're just going to write lots of f's here uh hex editor the other file yeah that one was actually saved okay so we're going to sudo sh flashback flashback hang on cannot skip to specified offset cannot skip to specified offset why 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 can't you skip to that offset huh we're using the same block size as we did for reading we're doing the same skip how is that even possible oh right because this here would be skipping in here uh but we actually need to do the skip here right uh how do we do that um how do we do the skip on the output and not the input uh we look at the manual manual dd so we're looking for the uh skip seek so instead of skip we say seek skip n obs size size blocks at start of output so there is output block size and input block size and if we just say bs then uh it's for both right uh bs equals where is bs equals uh oh is that not in here there read and write up to bytes at a time default 512 overrides ibs and obs right 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 so yeah here we need to say uh seek okay that worked nice okay Uh, now let's see what happens when we boot up the beautiful laptop again and I would now expect to actually you know get some funny behavior or maybe it's conservative enough and uh, you know let's see uh -huh. it's always taking a long time that is the annoying part okay so i guess it just uh yeah it just won't boot from it because you know uh we messed this up okay good well that is actually a, a very good thing right so um yeah the the thing is now uh what we would like to do actually is um we would also like to have a checksum that is uh you know actually matching up with um you know the garbage we just wrote right so that the laptop would still uh try booting from this yeah this here Okay, so what we did was, hang on a second. Didn't we write garbage to this here? Oh, no, no, this is the wrong directory. Okay, sorry. We were here in the subdirectory. Okay, so we wrote all Fs to this here. What do the Fs mean again? So that would be the number of, uh, number, number, number of, uh 
number of bytes in the header, the header size. Right, must be greater than or equal to 92 and must be less than or equal to the logical block size. Okay. So, um, let's actually do the following. So the CRC32 checksum for the header structure. Oh, right. So if we if we write some mess in here, um, yeah, we wouldn't actually be able to, uh, you know, to write a CRC32 checksum that makes sense now because we wrote a large header size. So, yeah, the header size is not really something that uh, we can sensibly play with. Um, yeah, I I think we would uh, find something else maybe to play with. Hmm. number of partition entries size of a partition entry partition entry array crc32 yeah well Yeah, maybe it's easier to just uh, mess with a partition entry itself instead. Um, like, do partitions have like a... Uh, do partitions have a... So, well, size of partition entry. How about we mess with this here? So this is at... Uh, 84 hex 84 is uh, hex 84 is 54 right so that would be the size of the entry okay so 5 4 does that make sense for the size of the entry so the size would be 80 Yeah, the, that is the thing, right? So if we change the size here, uh, the CRC32 would again not really fit. So yeah, we we, we can construct a uh, like a very large size because we, we would need to have a matching CRC32. I think the only number we can sensibly change is the number of partition entries, but I don't understand why this here says 80, or, well, this would be hex 80, but it doesn't really make sense. Not, not to me. Um, yeah, whatever. Okay, so let's, uh, let's do the following. Um, Yeah, let's let's copy back the uh, this here, right? So, whoops, I just involuntarily uh, pushed a power button here. Sorry. Okay. So yeah, that would be uh, that would restore the. Uh, USB drive now, so if I, you know, write this back, uh, might take a few seconds to synchronize. And then we try booting up the laptop again. It should now boot fine again, and we should see our beautiful Linux coming up again. Does that work? Does that work? Do we get, like, Linux? Come on. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and one, two, three, four. Ah, look at that. I uh, guess uh, we messed this up in a very severe manner. Is it though that messy? Uh, this here, this here is, uh, this here is restored. And this here is also restored. 
yeah, whatever. Uh, maybe, maybe, maybe it wants to. Uh, can we get to the setup menu from here? Of course, we cannot. We can only get to this here. Yeah, maybe it just uh, restored some settings or something. That could be. Maybe it restored the secure boot option or something, and then won't uh, won't want to boot from the USB drive anymore. Maybe it's uh, you know some fail safe mechanism. You never know. No, please get us back into the menu. Thank you. Config. Uh, date security boot. Secure boot. Secure boot is disabled. That is good. Uh, secure boot mode. Set. Okay, it's uh, disabled anyway. Exit, 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 safe, whatever. Yeah, we can also see if we can restore the table with gparted. Or we just write a new one. It's a, uh, you know, just a toy USB drive anyway. I might have messed up the script for it. Yeah, that looks like uh, it's not going to work. Oh well. Oh well. Uh, does this uh, like write back? Do we have a command to write back? Uh, when you make a change in parted, how would you write back the change? Can do a lot of things, but uh, how do you write this back? This is the help. The help doesn't tell us how to write back. Huh. Yeah, let's see what it says now. Maybe it crashes. No, it does not. It's actually, uh, hey, look at that. It's, uh, it's somehow broken, right? So it looks like um, both the primary and backup GPT tables are corrupt. Try making a fresh table and using part its rescue feature to recover partitions. Seriously? I thought we had, uh, I thought we had restored everything. Hang on. So this here is 02. We, uh, at some point changed that to 03. Just, you know, just because uh, we wanted to try it. Hmm. Oh, do we do we still have the output from above? Right, we we do. So we know our offsets and we know the very precise number of bytes, right? So this here uh, is what we want to take notes on. Nice. Okay. Ah, uh, can we can we sudo g, g can we sudo parted p? Huh. Try making a fresh table and using parted's rescue feature to recover partitions. Okay. Uh, help. How do you create a new? There is like rescue. Rescue. How do you create a new table? MK part is for making a partition. How do you create the partition table? Huh. Does set this toggle 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 the state of flag on partition number version unit? Oh dear. Uh, let's just say rescue. Oh, create a new disk label. Or partition table. Okay, it's MK, 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 MK table. New disk label, uh, label type, uh, GPT, like chat GPT. Um, 
Okay, what else? Uh, rescue, rescue, start. Yes, yeah. Uh, I don't know. Zero. What do you put in there? Uh, end. Uh, I don't know. Two. Uh, this here. Size. Uh, yeah. End is here. The end is near. Okay, so it takes like half a minute to recover this. Searching for file systems. Oh well. Huh, good thing it's not the NVMe I'm uh, working on or SSD or whatever it is. Okay, uh, print. Huh, uh, that doesn't look like it found anything, right? Okay, so how, how do you create a partition? Partition number, uh, number one. Partition doesn't exist. Okay, how do you, how do you create a partition? I, I'm not used to part, I'm used to uh, something else. Um, F disk, it's called. Huh, whatever. Uh, I, I don't even know why I'm using this here. Make a partition. MK part, part type, FS type, start and end. Mm, K part, part type. What, what, what part type can I provide? Can I say ESP for EFI system partition? And uh, why does the laptop here reboot again? Just turn it off. Okay. I will mk part and then uh, give it the start and the end. Uh, mk part ESP. Oh, it's actually, is it like, do I write EFI system partition? Do I write that out? Now we'll just write ESP like this. Um, and then the start. This here, and the end, this here. Did that work? Wow, amazing, okay. Uh, now the name is ESP, file system. It doesn't know the file system. <sighs> okay, part, and then we give it uh, can we actually put quotes here? What is, what is the first thing? Okay, part. Partition name. Okay, so the partition name is uh, X. The file system type uh, would be ext4. The start is this here, and the end is this. No, this is the... Print. Uh, mk part x x4. The start is here and the end is near. Okay. And now print. Okay, so how do I change the file system? Uh, help. File, file, file system. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I can change the name. How do I change the damn file system? How, how hard can this be? Print, quit, rescue, rm, select, disk, set. Where is, where is the, where is the changing the file system? It doesn't exist. How does this not exist? Oh well. Okay, so we will do the following. Uh, we will exit, quit, whatever, and we will use fdisk instead. Uh, great. Uh, sudo fdisk. So here you just say p for print and then you get help. No, help is actually m for menu. And here you can change a partition type. We're going to change the type of the first partition 
uh, we're going to list them because who knows the partitions. So if I system partition, that is what we want. We want one. Okay. Um, command, right. Okay. So sudo fdisk l. Look. Now that could work again. Uh, we are going to unplug the thing back into the laptop and see if it boots. Does it boot? Do you think it will boot? Lenovo, are you going to boot? Come on. You can do it. Well, we, we didn't really get too far today, but at least, you know, we, we played around a bit and apparently that does not work. How can it be so hard? How can that be so hard? Well, um, sudo mount, 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 dev sda, wait, what? Where is my SDA one? Sudo 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 sync. Uh, uh -huh, uh -huh, uh -huh. Unplug and plug in again. Oopsies. Search search dev sd. To do f disk. How does that even work? I don't get it. I guess we should have used f disk from the start. So print. Okay. Um, what else? What else? Okay, here we get the size in sectors and a sector is 512 bytes. So that's why we get like quite different numbers from this year, but yeah, whatever. Print, help, uh, menu, menu, menu. Yeah, whatever, uh, to create a new label. I, I don't know why they call it a label, even though it's a partition table. Whatever, P. Okay, uh, yeah, let's just start over again. Let's create a new partition. The partition number is one. The first, okay, now we, we need to go like, So this here goes plus and then the size. What? Are you out of range? How can this be out of range? Oh, right. Uh, we can actually use the B unit, right? For bytes. Plus and then number of bytes. Oh, you gotta be kidding me. Less sector plus minus sectors or plus minus size. Okay, um, okay, we need to provide the size in K. So we're going to divide by 1024. Okay, so we will say plus 512,000 K. Good. And now we get the wrong, uh, what was it? T and then one. Good. Okay. 
And now we create a new partition. It's partition number two, the first sector. And the last sector is just what's left. And now we're going to say P for print. And that looks good again. And we are going to write this back. Syncing disks. Disks SD. Why isn't there now SDA1 and SDA2? I don't get that. I don't get that. SD, SDA. There's just SDA. I don't know. It doesn't make any sense to me. Especially with uh, FDisk actually listing the two partitions. It even says device dev SDA1. I don't understand. The stupid laptop here is uh, powering on and off again for whatever reason. Okay. Uh let's just let's just see what happens when we unplug and you know, plug this in again on the laptop. Oh, we we're actually not seeing what I was seeing. Anyway, yeah, we we, we were not seeing the file. Like the device. Yeah, whatever. Beautiful Lenovo again. Can you boot? Nope, not not gonna boot. Okay. Oh well. Yeah, it's uh, it's sort of hilarious how easy it is to sort of brick a USB drive. It literally doesn't create, oh, hang on. sudo journal ctl dash ef, what does it say? Write cache disabled, attached SCSI generic SG0 type zero. Uh, well. Well. I don't know why, but uh, it's uh, not giving us the different partitions, even though there are partitions. And FDisk even prints the partitions. Uh, virtually makes no sense. Uh, parted. Does parted see the partitions? It does. It does. But it doesn't see the file systems, though. But why? Yeah, I guess you can just uh, corrupt your uh, disks very easily with that stuff. Um, that's why you don't really edit that by hand in your hex editor, but actually have an operating system taking care of it. Anyway, um, yeah, we've uh, we've been going for about two hours now, so yeah, uh, I I'm sorry it ended this way, but you know, it is what it is. So uh, let's uh, put it this way. Um, yeah, for next time, uh, I, w I will see if I can figure out how to actually uh, write the uh, logo fail image stuff, right? So um, just uh, just as a brief note, let's let's have a quick look again at the, uh, not the blog entry, but the PDF here. So we, we, we actually wanted to investigate the logo fail vulnerability. We wanted to uh, start with something, uh, something simpler, like, you know, writing something to a USB drive. Um, Apparently, that isn't too easy. Um, we want to talk about the image parsers being the attack surface here in this uh, instance. Uh, we wanted to look at this here. Uh, actually, that is something we can uh, very quickly look at right now. So uh, we're going to search for uh, Dixies, right? So we um, we have loaded our uh, firmware images in Fietka. So Fietka can tell us the contents of the firmware images. Uh, no, no firmware detected. I think the analysis is still running. Yeah, uh, that, that happens sometimes. Just wait a few minutes or seconds or whatever. Um, yeah, we, we, we can see if we, yeah, there we go. If we find some of these decoders. So decoder, do we get decoder? System image decoder Dixie. Uh, oh, look, 
Uh, that is actually the Phoenix one here. That is exactly what we're seeing here. So we are interested in exploiting the system image decoder Dixie. This one here, it's a 100 kilobytes file um, that is here within uh, this thing. So this thing here is the, um, if, if you recall from last time, this is the Dixie environment, right? So this is where we have the Dixie core and you know all, all the Dixies. So the Dixies is essentially drivers, right? It also says it here, EFI have V file type driver. And uh, yeah, that is uh, that is what we're targeting. So yeah, uh, inside apparently has like um, separate uh, files for uh, doing this. And then AMI has a single file and Tiano Core apparently also has uh, just as, maybe it's really just the bitmap thing. Or maybe this is uh, like, I don't know, this might be the reference code and then it ends up here or something. I don't know. I will figure this out. Anyway, we already know that we have Phoenix firmware, right? So yeah, we, we want to see this here. Um, there's a tool by Binary called EFI Explorer. Uh, that is an extension to IDA Pro, if I remember correctly. So I don't have IDA Pro here. Yeah, IDA plugin. Um, so we can't really make use of that. Um, but, uh, you know, we can always uh, come up with our own tools. So, and we might actually want to do that at some point. Anyway, um, yeah. So, oh, look at that. Logo is read from a fixed location, e.g. EFI OEM logo.jpg. Oh, maybe, maybe we can actually also, uh, you know, use that. An environment variable contains the path of the logo. An environment variable contains the logo itself. The logo is stored into an unsigned volume of a firmware update. I think this might actually be the case for Lenovo. Unsigned volume of a firmware update. Because you, you recall we um, we looked at the Lenovo update utility and it said, you, you know, you can just put your logo in here. So it wouldn't make sense for that to get a signature from Lenovo because that would mean that you get the Lenovo key for signing things. Uh, apparently, you know, that uh, you know, would, wouldn't work out because then everybody would have that uh, key for signing and everybody could sign everything. So yeah, it would only make sense if you could only sign something for your, uh, your own firmware, right? But then again, you, you would need to have the key for that again and some key management uh, infrastructure and so on. Yeah, uh, we it will actually uh, we we will try this year. We will try this year. Uh, we just need to get the USB drive to work again. I don't know why that isn't working. Um, we we will figure it out. Yeah, they they uh, found it uh, through uh, you know fuzzing or found some things through fuzzing. Uh, they're describing it here. Uh, they say they found hundred uh, hundreds of issues and you know then uh, played with the pixel height and you know. So let's let's see if this works with the uh, uh, custom uh, thingy, or maybe through a uh, firmware update somehow. Yeah, we we might need to write our own tool for it. So the the thing is, we could actually do something constructive, right? It could be that um, we come up with a very nice tool eventually uh, that you can then also use on Linux to uh, write your own boot logo. That would be really really cool. Um, otherwise, uh, you know, there is a uh, Windows image here in the laptop. Um, I never use Windows, so yeah, it's uh, it would be a funny thing to do on the stream here. Uh, you know, watching me trying to figure this out. Anyway, they use a thing center here for the proof of concept, right? So, yeah, that one was a Tiger Lake. Tiger Lake is later generation. This laptop here is a Cabby Lake. That is uh, the seventh generation Intel Core. The series eleventh, so uh, a bit more recent. They were using a firmware image from June 2023. Ours is from uh, 2020, as we uh, figured, right? So like also around June or something. So three years older. Um, yeah. Oh, and that was running on uh, AMI firmware. So that was their PNG parser. Yeah. We, we, we will see. So we, we had some notes in the text file where, uh, you know, we could um, uh, we, we could see what formats were supported. Yeah, let's see. Let's see. Yeah, all, all of this here is now very detailed and, uh, you know, more about like 
the exploit itself. But first, we need to figure out the mechanism of um, you know providing that image, and then maybe we will also get to this point where uh, you know we can just crash something. But yeah, um, that is uh, that is our eventual goal, and apparently for another day. Anyway, so yeah, uh, thank you everyone uh, again for uh, tuning in here. And see you some other time when uh, we're going to, uh, you know, try to get this going. Take care and goodbye.